Hey everyone, this is Jubal from Splunk. Uh, this is the latest edition of our Splunker story series where we sit down and talk to the people behind the data. Today I'm meeting with Tanya Pfeffer, who is a senior manager of client platform engineering. Um, Tanya has been at Splunk since 2017. Uh, she's got a really great story to tell personally and professionally. Um, Tanya, such a pleasure to sit down with you. How's everything? Thanks for having me. I'm pretty yeah. excited. Good. Me too. Um, so we've talked, uh, uh, you know, prior to this call and, and, and in the past, um, and you've had a pretty uh, successful run at Splunk in your last four years. I would love to just hear in your words, you know, a little bit about what you do, what your team does, and then what your career progression has been at Splunk. Yeah, um, yeah, it's been a wild ride. Um, so I manage the team that manages the computers that Splunkers use, essentially, to, to dumb it down. Or, you know, um, so we manage the management software that handles Macs, Windows, and, and now Linux uh, devices as well. So when you're sitting at your computer and you get a pop-up that says, you're out of date and you need to update, you can thank us for that. We've interrupted many, many meetings and made many Splunkers very happy and unhappy, but uh, we're doing our best to make sure that we keep machines running smoothly and securely here at Splunk. So my career really started um, doing support, um, mostly in the higher ed uh, field. And I really, really liked working in education. It's just a super chill environment, very relaxed. Um, I didn't usually get summers off because that's when we did most of our work, but um, it, it was just a laid back atmosphere. And about five years ago, um, my wife and I lived in Minneapolis and we were just kind of getting a little restless thinking for a change. So on a whim, I, uh, I applied for a job in, in California. My sister was living in San Jose, so we, we relocated out there to, to the San Jose area and I worked for uh, ServiceNow for a bit. It was a jump to go from higher ed to corporate. And it was, I really liked it on some level because having budget and access to resources was something that was really new to me. But at the same time, I missed kind of that, that super chill environment, right? Um, so then this opportunity at Splunk came along. And at that point, to be perfectly honest, most of what I knew about Splunk was from the t-shirts. Uh, and just kind of a cool, quirky marketing campaign that, that Splunk's got going on. I, we used it internally at ServiceNow, but I wasn't on the team that, that had a lot of interface with it. So it was just kind of a whim again, and I decided to go for it. It was the um, doing mostly Mac support, Mac pl client platform engineer, um, and I just loved it. I think it was a cultural fit. It gave me the best of both worlds, that kind of like chill and relaxed, atmosphere that really I felt valued as, a, as an individual, but also, you know, fast moving, access to resources, just that great kind of confluence of, of, of things that I was looking for. And I was doing the Mac admin thing and it was great. Um, and then my boss uh, saw something in me that I probably didn't see in myself. You know, I've kind of fought against management for a long time. I was like, oh, I could never be a manager. It's just not who I am. And imagine me being a manager. And then it was like, okay, the, as Splunk is growing, the team needs a manager. My, my, my manager at the time talked to me. He was like, is this something that you'd be interested in? And it was, it was kind of like, okay, I've had enough managers in my life that I know what I like and what I don't like. Um, and let's give it a go. So she was super, super encouraging to help me get to a point that I don't think I would have gotten to on my own naturally. And I, I just kind of loved it. it. It turns out that there were, I think of myself as a very introverted uh, person who likes to sit behind the keyboard and just do my work silently. But it turns out there was a part of me that just wasn't really getting tapped into for that, that connection and growth and building and seeing a vision and helping kind of be a part of something greater. And it, it just really clicked for me. And um, now you, the team- What do you, so what do you- oh, sorry, what, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. What, <clears throat> what do you think your manager saw in you that could, you know, needed to be untapped? I don't, I don't know. I mean, 
potentially the that that getting the confidence i think really honestly is what it was is i just didn't have the confidence in myself to say i can do this i can take it to the next level and it's not not management isn't for everybody and it's not like that you have to have that progression and i didn't feel any pressure it was just like I think what she saw in me is, you know, you think of yourself as this quiet introvert who doesn't like working with people, but you're really good with people and you really do connect and you, and you help nurture people and you're playing a lead role already. So it was sort of like helping me look inward to find that confidence to, to see if I could expand in that way. Love it. I think. That's, <clears throat> that's, that's, pretty rare. I mean, that's the sign I think of a good manager is recognizing the potential in others, right? Yeah. So not everybody gets that opportunity. So I'm, you know, happy that you were in the right place at the right time with the right leader to recognize that in you and set you on this course because you've been successful at it. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's been, it's been great. Yeah. Sorry, but I interrupted you. So, so tell me, tell me more about that. I mean, how, what was that like getting into management? How did your job change? What do you, like about it, you know, you're, you just got another promotion. Now you're a senior manager. So obviously you're doing something right. So just, yeah, talk, talk to me about that. And uh, you know, what, what's, what's that like? Yeah. When you say the right place at the right time, I think with the right people that, that really puts it in perspective uh, and kind of encapsulates everything that I feel like this, this fortuitous events that came to make me a manager and that have the, have the success is just sort of like, I came on board and I became a manager right at the time that we were acquiring signal effects. So, you know, the company was already growing rapidly and we had already added a few members to the team. Um, so at that point, there were three of us on the team. And then we brought signal effects on board and they had two super, super talented people that we brought into our department. And it was like, boom, so we're growing and growing. Um, and then, you know, we're talking about bringing in more talent on the, doing support on the Linux side. So I didn't really have a lot of time to sort of adjust and be like, to sit back and be like, so now I'm a manager. What's that like? What's the transit? You know, it's just like, it's so constant and, and the pace at Splunk is super fast. Um, so I didn't have a lot of time to kind of ponder if I was doing a good job or not, which is good because once I get in my own head, that's kind of where where the bad stuff starts not bad stuff but self-doubt and all that um so i was fortunate as well not to have the time to do that and be like am i doing a good job is it okay you know my boss was just like you you got this you're doing great we're expanding look at what we're doing just keep going just keep going and and that really helped me so the transition i think the hardest part for me about transitioning from like an individual contributor to a manager was learning to let go a little bit. And I, I think I never I never thought of myself as a control freak and I don't think that I'm a micromanager at all, but um, just feeling like, oh, I don't want, I don't want to bother them with this crap work. I'll just, I'll just take care of it. And so that's another thing that my manager has really modeled very well. Um, is she's kind of helped me see you're not you're not, you know, you can't do everything and you're not doing your team a service to, to do that. So, and the team has been amazing. Like the talent that I get to work with has made me, has given me any success. You know, it's like, I didn't have, I didn't come in with this huge management challenge of difficult people to work with and da, 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 da. I just had great people um, that are super successful and doing a great job. So it's like, I get to kind of, you know, I get it easy maybe than, than some other managers because they're so talented and, and, and driven and awesome and really focused in on what they're doing. Um, so that's been good, but just kind of them helping me too to see like, hey, you're in a lot of meetings. Let, is there something that I can do to kind of help take this off your plate? And, and that, that great uh, dialogue that I've been able to have with them. Yeah. And, and how has that team grown since, you know, since, since the day you joined, walked in the door at Splunk, how has that team grown? So when I walked in at Splunk, uh, it was just me and then another guy who, who left like two months after I started. I don't take it personally. I don't think it was me. <laughs> he had already had something lined up. So 
uh, for a while, it was just kind of me uh, doing and working. Luckily, again, the, the service desk at Splunk um, is super talented as well. So they really helped me out a lot. Uh, I work really, our teams work really closely together. Um, and then we brought, you know, we replaced the guy who left to do mostly Windows engineering and brought in another person. And then, so then we had three, then the signal effects acquisitions brought in two more. Um, and we've just brought in two more people. So we're a total of eight now. And it's, uh, I, I feel like every year we kind of expand. We're like a fishbowl or a goldfish in our fishbowl, just yeah. growing exponentially. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, well, see, so you joined Splunk right about the same time I did in 2017. And I think at that time it was, we were maybe, you know, 2,500 2, employees or something like that. And now we're almost triple that uh, globally. Yeah. So it's pretty, um, pretty intense. Yeah. And I mean, the fact that you, you've you been able to do, that your team's been able to do what they do, I'm, I'm surprised that uh, there's eight folks keeping the keeping the lights on, so to speak. I would assume there to be a team of 25 or, or more. So, you know, I don't totally know everything about what you all do, but uh, you do it well. Um, so so t t tell me a little bit more about, you know, that 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 teamwork environment. I mean, that, that resonates uh, with me as, as, you know, my personal journey at, at Splunk, you know, starting off in talent acquisition. And then I just moved to the new employee experience team and, you know, I've had to kind of leave some things behind that I sort of built up and, you know, wanted to keep my hands on, but I've got to sort of let those go to focus on other things. And I have the same experience. Everyone's been supportive, raising their hand. Um, you know, a few key, you know, individuals that, that know my schedule and know what I do or, or more, you know, cognizant of it. But um, I feel like that's unique to Splunk. And you, you just mentioned that. I mean, what, what is it about Splunk that seems to, you know, attract these types of folks where we are kind of in it for the greater good and want each other to be successful? Um, you know, t tell me, tell me your thoughts on that. Well, I think it's, it's a feeling of being a part of something greater than yourself. And I saw this a lot in education. It was sort of like, you know, we're helping shape the minds of the next generation or whatever. And just feeling like you're contributing to something, you know that what you're doing matters to somebody else. You know, and you say, it's amazing that eight people are keeping the lights on, but it's, it's really not eight people because the entire IT organization is a team and and you know i know that if i fall down and don't do my part then the network people are gonna get twice as much work to do and the service desk is going to get three thousand times more calls you know and and the identity team and it's just like we all kind of work in tandem so i think part of it is knowing that you're a, a piece of something um is, is super important. And I think Splunk does a great job of stressing that, but also just liking the people you work with. You know, I, I, I came from support. And one of the things that I've always said about bringing people into the support realm is you can teach the tech, you know, you can teach the skill set. You know, some people are more technically savvy than others, but what you can't really teach is that innate personal connection, treating people like people, right? Is it's, we've all been on the other line with a support person who is just looking at their numbers and doesn't really care about you at all. Um, or you've had somebody come out to do your cable or whatever, you know, it's just, they don't see you as a person. And that, that customer service aspect, I think really permeates the entire IT org. So even the people who don't have any customer facing roles, they understand that <laughs> if they don't do their job, somebody's going to suffer. And it, it means the whole organization suffers. So it's not just a stock price, right? Because, you know, I, we secure the endpoints. If somebody breaches and there's a big solar winds type fiasco, it definitely comes back on us and it affects everything. But more importantly, that salesperson who's out making a call, I know what it's like to be out there and have something fail. I mean, I'm not a salesperson, but I know what it's like to be on a computer and have my internet go out. And 
I understand that that person is frustrated and needs this to work. And it's not personal that they're angry at me. Or, you know, just that feeling of like, I'm contributing, I'm helping in some way. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so Tanya, tell me a little bit about, you know, Splunk's culture. And, and I mean, I, I think you just spoke to it. Um, but I'm, I'm curious to, to know how you feel the culture has, but well, if, if you would agree that the culture has, um, um, you know, uh, continued on as it was, even though we've all been remote and not necessarily seen each other in person or in the office for the last year and a half. Um, and, and if you do agree with that, um, I'd be curious to, to know why and how does Splunk do that? And, and what does that mean to you as a, as a Splunker and as a manager? Yeah, I, I've talked to a couple other people who work at different companies that have had a harder transition going remote. This year has been super interesting from that aspect. I think, I think Splunk was predisposed to do better than other companies for the distributed work model, just because, I mean, partially because we're a global company. So every meeting I was on anyway had a Zoom and somebody else was dialing in. So we had the infrastructure all set up already. But... We also made time and the company from the top down made this super important, made time to respect the differences in working remotely. So, you know, we got those, we get these random holidays, you know, where it's just like, we get this Monday off and people are like, well, why? What's the holiday? It's like Splunk just wants us to take a day off and not be on our computers, which is great. And then, you know, the no meetings Fridays and then just get, making sure that we schedule time within our own teams to have just social connections. So even if it's just a 15 minute check-in or a five minute check-in every day to just be like, here's a time that we can jump on a Zoom meeting and not have to talk about work or talk about work if we want to, but have that, have that culture of team permeate no matter where we are. And it's super interesting now because like myself, for example, I was in the San Jose office and when, when COVID hit, my wife works at a nonprofit. Her hours got cut. You know, we, we had moved from Minnesota um, and we just were like, you know, if you can work from anywhere, uh, we'd like to own our own house again. My wife is into super or is into house projects. As you can see, there's a hole in the wall back there. She discovered there's brick behind there. So soon I'll have exposed brick and it'll be very pretty. But, you know, it just wasn't it wasn't attainable for us in the Bay Area. So now I'm remote and a couple other people on my team have gone remote. And I don't think it's changed at all the way that we connect with one another, which has been very interesting. In some ways it gives us more to talk about because it's, you know, different aspects. It's like, oh, it's sunny here. I mean, the weather is always something to talk about. But when, when we all go back to work uh, and the offices start opening up, I don't think it's going to impact us. I don't think it's going to make a change. It'll be great to be able to get together um, occasionally. And now we have different places to go, which is kind of exciting too. Um, but yeah, I think Splunk was really predisposed to handle it well. And they and they embraced it right away. So that, that was really important too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love that. Yeah, I can't wait to see the brick. We'll have to do this yeah, again once... Awesome. Yeah, I have to do this again once you get that all buttoned up. Yeah. Um, so I, I want to go back to your your story about um, you know never thinking about getting into management and then you know kind of having that opportunity come your way. What advice would you give to people that you know think that they have that kind of innate big picture systems thinking ability? Um, or maybe they're, you know, doing really well as an individual contributor, but they wish they could do more. I mean, what would you tell yourself three years ago um, about, about taking that leap or maybe creating that opportunity for yourself if you didn't have the manager that you did that, that kind of pushed yeah. you along that path? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I mean, first of all, because I had the manager that I had, I would, I would say to my three-year-old, three years ago self, um, you trust Ashley, you respect her, and she sees something in you that maybe you don't, listen to that and, and 
you know, that's the thing is if you have a manager or even a, a senior manager above, above that manager or director or whatever, who sees something in you that you don't quite see, but you respect them greatly, trust that. So that's, that was the first piece for me is I really respected her and she saw something in me and I listened to it and I'm super glad that I did. The other thing is, is if you, if you aren't blessed with a, a manager like I had, um, just remember what you're good at. And if it's something, if it's just making jokes in meetings and making people laugh, that's something too. There's something, there is value in those non-technical, untangible skills. So I would dismiss all that. You know, I would, I, oh yeah, sure, people like me or don't like me or whatever, but that's not, that's not, you know, I don't have a certification to prove that. I've never been in management school. I didn't get an MBA, but there, there's more to management and that, and that kind of role than, than an MBA could ever measure. And MBA is, is just something I pulled out of a hat, but just kind of like, it might be intangible, but it's not irrelevant, those, those soft skills. And even calling it a soft skill feels dismissive on some level, right? Because I work in a highly technical field and I work with a lot of hardcore, um, I wouldn't, nerds, I'll just say it. I'm, I'm a nerd too, so I'm allowed to say that, but like, it's, it's intimidating. And, you know, I might not be the best coder or I might not be the best at this that or the other thing this guy does it better this she does it better than me but I have I have something to offer and somebody else sees that and that's that's great yeah love it yeah well congratulations I think you um I'm thrilled that you had the opportunity and again that everything aligned for you and um you know just in getting to know you you seem like you'd be a really cool person to work with and work for so I just, uh, you know, kudos to you and kudos to your manager and, and to Splunk for, for making that happen. So. Yeah, I'm really happy. Um, so, so, you know, you've been here through some, some growth. You've had some, uh, quite a bit of success in terms of internal mobility. You've seen the company change from, um, you know, on-premise to cloud from, um, you know, in office work to remote work, like you've seen a lot of change over the last four years. Um, you know, it's in tech right now, it's kind of like musical chairs. Like there's a lot of people moving around right now because they, there are more opportunities, it seems like, right? I mean, you don't have to work for the company that's right outside of your front door. You can work for any, anywhere, anyone remote right now. Why is now a good time to join Splunk? Well, I think partially um, because you can <laughs> join from anywhere. You know, I mean, we're not limited anymore to picking people that are in offices. And I mean, we had a, a fairly large number of distributed workforce folks before, but mostly they were in sales. Um, but now we have the ability. So perhaps you live in central Wisconsin or something and you're thinking, oh, I would love to work for Splunk but I don't want to move to the Bay Area. You don't have to anymore, <laughs> you know? So it, it's the flip side of what you said that there are more opportunities. So you can come work for a great company and not have to relocate to the Bay Area if you don't want to or, or somewhere where there's an office. But I also think that the thing that I tell people, and I've interviewed a few people, you know, since we've grown as a department and for other positions outside of my department, the thing that sells Splunk for me is, is the culture and the fact that at every stage in our growth, we're cognizant of what that means. And it's like, we don't wanna lose that, that core thing that makes us Splunk. And it has been a super difficult year, right? It's been hard. There's been you know the pandemic, there's been racial injustice, there's been all this upset in the world, um, the, the backlash, the political unrest, there's been so much. But at every stage of that, our leadership has, has communicated to us, has checked in with us, has made it clear that they want to hear our voices. You know, the million data points thing, I think, hit right at the right time because it's true. It's, I mean, it feels cliche to say that, but 
I do feel like my uh, personality or my data points are valued. And I think that's the thing that makes Splunk unique, at least in my experience, is that you could, sure, I could work for a, another place. I mean, you have senior manager in your title and all of a sudden all these people are coming out of the woodwork asking you to work at places that it's like, I don't, I've never gotten a, a request like that before. But anyway, um, why would I leave Splunk? I feel at home here, I feel comfortable. And I know that when something bad happens in the world, my the CEO is not just sitting there being worried about the stock price. Like he's actually worried about how it affects us as people. And, you know, we get stories from our, our executive team saying, this is how this impacted me. And I've got, you know, family that was impacted in this way. And it, it, it makes that connection. And it just makes me, again, part of something. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I love it. And, uh, couldn't, couldn't have said it better myself. Um, you know, I think that's for, for me, um, you know, throughout the last year with everything you mentioned, the Zoom calls like this and team meetings and things that, you know, in the past have felt monotonous at other companies, right? Where, you, you know, I'm not looking forward to getting on another Zoom call or doing another presentation. For me, it's kind of been my anchor. Like I get to talk to my people today you know, and it's kind of gotten me through it mentally. So, um, yeah, glad that we're, um, hopefully turning a corner and, uh, you know, can't wait to, to see some old friends in person once things open up and, you know, some new friends like you in person, um, you know, hopefully we cross paths in Santana row or SF at some point, but, um, yeah, no, I love, I love what you said. And, and yeah, you know, Doug Merritt, CEO, and, and the rest of the leadership. I mean, yeah, you don't you don't get that everywhere. That actual genuine check in as people. Like we are in this together. We, right. um, you know, I, f I feel genuinely gen genuinely cared for and taken care of. So yeah. um, great, great to hear you say that. Well, Tanya, it's been so nice to spend some time with you and hear your story. And just congrats again. And I wish you so much more continued Thank success. You. And uh, looking forward to, you know, crossing paths live soon or via Zoom or, you know. Yeah, absolutely. A support I, ticket I, or something like that. I, I have my, my first post-vaccination flight. I'm ready to go. <laughs> oh, all right. Cool. Yeah. See you in Santana Row. <laughs> all right. Fantastic. Thanks again, Tanya. She's Tanya. I'm Jubal. We are Splunk. Check us out at splunk.com slash careers. See you. Thank you much.